boss fights where you have no chance of killing the boss, much less winning, are fairly typical in games. You know, they serve a multitude of purposes, from advancing the narrative to kickstarting the player's growth and power. Let's take a look at video game bosses that couldn't be killed no matter what you did. Story spoilers follow, so be warned. Phylax the Warrior, Destiny 2 Beyond Light. Much of the story in Destiny 2 Beyond Light focuses on harnessing the power of stasis. Before that, though, the player encounters Eremus in Re Reborn as she bestows stasis power to her followers in the House of Darkness. Upon being discovered, there's no other choice but to run. Phylax, the warrior, also appears to stop you, but is completely immune to any damage. Eventually, you'll come back and use the power of stasis to defeat her before taking down Aramis herself. Darth Vader, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order After the Star Wars prequel trilogy, the badass appeal of Darth Vader has been strongly diminished. While regaining some credibility in Rogue One, it's the finale of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order where Vader truly shines. On top of effortlessly deflecting Cal's attacks, Vader just throws all kinds of debris at him like it's nothing. It's only by sheer luck that Cal escapes along with Siri. Koten Khan, the first fight, Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> This is your time, Lord Sakai. Due to being severely weakened with broken armor, Jin's first battle with Koten Khan ends in abject failure. Not only does Khan deal obscene amounts of damage, but pretty much all of his attacks are unblockable. You can still persevere and completely deplete his health, but he still won't fall. In the end, Jin must lose in order to come back stronger. The first fight with Baldur, God of War in 2018. <laughs> God of War starts in a fairly somber manner, but it's not long before Baldur arrives and turns things up to 11. While having a health bar that can be depleted, Baldur is effectively immortal, regenerating after the first phase. This results in a continuous and earth-splitting back and forth between the two before Kratos snaps his neck and lets him fall off a cliff. Of course, Baldur returns later, none the worse for wear, and is only ever vulnerable near the game's end. Jetstream Sam, Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance. For as badass as Raiden is for decimating a Metal Gear Ray by his lonesome, Samuel Rodriguez, aka Jetstream Sam, is another level entirely. You could guard as much as possible in the first fight, but Sam defeating Raiden is part of the story and happens regardless. Raiden has his left eye sliced and then loses an arm with no way to fight back, but he's eventually saved by his allies while Sam exits the scene. Crow and Ordeen, The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel the climax of Trails of Cold Steel is pretty crazy, with Trista being assaulted by hordes of enemy mechs. It's all Class 7 can do to defeat one Panzer Soldat before being effortlessly defeated by Scarlet. Valamar awakens and Ran becomes his pilot to outmatch her, but the victory is cut short when Crow arrives in Ordeen. Due to his overwhelming power and experience, he handedly beats Ran and Valamar. By the end, there's nothing else the pair can do except run away and fight another day. Dasan, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast. Kyle Katarn, you're the legendary hero who destroyed Jerek at the Valley of the Jedi. You look like nothing more than a panther herder. Well, you look like an overgrown Kowakian monkey lizard, so I guess looks don't count for much. Hand her over. It's hard to dislike Dasan. He's a Chistori, which are a sentient species of Saurians and a powerful Jedi. Sadly, he's the villain in Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, and the player must battle him on Artist Prime. 
Kyle only having a blaster doesn't help since Dasan can easily deflect its shots. But so powerful is the latter that doesn't strike with his lightsaber, simply tossing the protagonist around with the force. Macron Quake 4 after taking down two stream protectors in the Nexus Hub, you come face to face with the Strog's supreme leader, Macron. What makes this fight slightly different from the others is that Macron will kill you if you don't deal some damage to him. Once he's taken enough punishment, he'll use a dark matter tractor beam and capture the player, even if they're in cover, for Strogification. High Max Mega Man X6. While Vile is more renowned for beating the player down early in the first Mega Man X, High Max could do the same in Mega Man X 6, that too, without needing ride armor. Upon defeating the giant mechanoloid in the first mission and seeing a glimpse of Nut Zero, X takes on High Max. He takes no damage and can defeat X pretty easily, but survive for long enough and he'll leave on his own. Steve, Resident Evil Code Veronica. One may feel for Steve, having been turned into a B.O.W. against his will, but it is Steve, so it's hard to be too sympathetic. Unfortunately, you can't exact revenge for the, his terrible character because he's unlikable here. Even worse, Steve wields an axe that can kill Claire in two hits, so the only sane option is to run away. Steve comes to his senses momentarily to save Claire from Alexia, but suffers a fatal blow in the process, which eventually kills him. Tyrannosaurus Dino Crisis 2. The Tyrannosaurus in the Dino Crisis series might as well be the Terminator. Traditional firearms won't even cause it to flinch, while more powerful weapons like the anti-tank rifle only succeed in briefly slowing it. In Dino Crisis 2, Regina even uses a tank cannon against the Tyrannosaurus, and while it does go down, it gets right back up again. Did we mention it can eat the player whole without any issues? So, like, by the end, it takes a bigger dinosaur, the Gigantosaurus, to finally bring it down, and then it starts pursuing Regina instead. Pyramid Head Silent Hill 2 When it comes to survival horror baddies, Pyramid Head still remains one of the most invulnerable out there. Nothing you do will kill him, and it's advised to escape, or hide at certain points whenever necessary. Plot reasons ultimately dictate his invulnerability, so when protagonist James Sunderland embraces his guilt, Pyramid Head ends up dying to itself in the end. So what are your thoughts on this? Go ahead and share them in the comments below, and if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. We upload every day and would really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.